we were, I guess, fortunate um, that we made a decision very early on um, to activate in a very different way with the Tour de France. So like any of these big brand partnerships, which which many organizations have, um, you know, you have very clear um, strategic goals around why you enter into the partnership in, in the first place. So in February 2020, we, um, you know, and it wasn't because we knew had any great foresight or projections about what was going to happen with the pandemic. But it was something as as basic as we were having to confirm venues and make deposit payments for venues for um, accommodation for our technical team at the July edition of the Tour de France, as well as for our client program. Um, and that was actually quite a significant amount of money. Um, and so at that point, there was so much uncertainty um, in the world around what was going to happen. We actually made a decision back in February to say, Whatever happens, we don't have anybody on the ground in France at the Tour de France. And we normally have a, a fairly large technical team that are there delivering uh, the, the technical service that allow us to deliver all the technology that allows us to capture data from the bikes, that, put, uh, that analyzes and publishes that data in real time, that then tells stories with that data across social platforms, across digital platforms, and, and, and also with graphics that, that go onto the TV broadcast. So we decided that that team wouldn't be physically in France. And then we also made a decision that the marketing program would be activated fully virtually. So we created a phrase that we called the virtual Tour de France or, or the virtual zone technique, the virtual client program. And interestingly, actually, uh, later on in the year, the Tour de France itself decided they'd have a virtual Tour de France because the race was actually moved back two months um, um, and, and postponed two months. So. Um, we were probably one of the best decisions in hindsight we made was to make that decision very early. Um, and that gave us time to plan to both think about how do you fully virtualize a technical solution and deliver it with a team that are based all the way around the world. Um, and that team had the, 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 the time to prepare themselves physically uh, to not actually be on the ground in France, but to be working the, the hours of the, the race in France. And, and we had people all the way from Melbourne through um, Japan, South Africa, Europe, all the way to the west coast of the States, supporting this virtual solution um, in France. So working some very strange hours um, for, for three weeks whilst, whilst the race happened. And then we also uh, really pivoted the client engagement program and storytelling, again, to be delivered fully virtually. And I think all marketers, certainly in the B2B space, have moved what would have been physical engagement, still very important to many of us, pretty much wholeheartedly now in, into the digital space. And we used it as an opportunity to trial lots of different platforms and types of events and ways of engaging digitally, small groups, large groups, interaction, no interaction, and really saw it as an opportunity for us to learn about what works, what doesn't work, um, what people enjoy, what they don't enjoy, as we told the story of um, virtualizing the Tour de France. So um, the Tour de has just finished. Um, was also very odd for us to execute a Tour de France that happened in September rather than July. So it, this year it felt like our birthday moved. Um, you know, we realised that we got so used to being in France in July, and then all of a sudden, a we weren't in France in July, and then we were we were supporting the tour in September. So that in itself felt weird. And um, so it's just finished, and actually we're beginning to see some really positive results around all of those strategic goals that we'd normally have um, from from just doing things differently and. We've just done the wrap up of this year's program, actually. And, and one of the things do you think we all conclude is this has been obviously not an expected disruption. Actually, we see quite a positive disruption because it will force change um, into how we think about the program, how we execute the program. This is a long term partnership for us, um, but it will force change in a good way. Uh, and actually, we think obviously nobody knows what 2021 will look like, um, but we'll definitely think differently about how we execute what we do um, in 2021, irrespective of where the world is.